Um, yeah, I think this is gonna be good. We left off when we were in Grandma's room, I think, and we just crawled through like little like opening, like the whole book thing or whatever. So yeah. Okay, let's do this. Calvin Finch. Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. Milton. Fort Calvin. It's pretty cool. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin, and that he never talked about him. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd though. die before he ate another mushroom, and he did. At Barbara's funeral, he swore he'd never be afraid again, and he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. That's the day he made up his mind to fly. And he did. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. Sad. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again. That's that was so cool. Passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Mm. 
Katie's father, Odin, built the original house. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Nom nom Old Barbara. Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it The Surprise Ending of Barbara Finch. As a... Now at 16, she was all washed up. A has-been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just the boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <gasps> mm, getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was canceled. Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally, the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him, right on cue. She reached for the music box. She wound the key. She listened for Rick, but the house was silent. I'm scared. She found Rick's crutch and imagined the worst. just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you're... She threw him out. 
But she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Hours later... Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up. But if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. Ooh. How do I... Stop playing the Michael Myers music. Uh, oh. Walter, are you there? Walter vanished, but his bedside radio was still on. Orcas Island police described the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quite smashing. Oh my god. Oh, she's thick. Get down there, he's gonna be not there anymore. Boom. Yeah, he's gone. Told you. The hook man had vanished. She listened for his breathing, but all she heard was. <laughs> This is not cool. Someone at the door was dying to speak to young Barbara. At the door, she heard whispering. It was coming from inside the house. Monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter? Hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. But that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale.
Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. I guess now I know why mom didn't like me playing with the music box. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Okay, so. This is. fucking. creepier than a biatch. Hmm. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. It's funny, all those times I played with the music box and never found the basement key. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with, if she hadn't died in Comic was right about there being a key inside the music box near the basement. Oh my, okay. Yeah, I was pretty sure I had to do that. Mom said the basement was off limits, unless I wanted another tetanus shot. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once, carrying packages. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Hold on. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe... Leave, I've been down here for 30 years. Ooh. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today, 
I always expect it to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. Even a monster on the other side of a door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just stopped. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe it got tired of waiting. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while well, I still can. I can't see anything. Oh. I know it's out there, somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara. And Molly. And Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day, even if it kills me. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left, or a month a single week. I'd be happy with one more day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. Walter died when I was six. I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. But if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made, trying to bury something that's still alive. Saving. Let's do this. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two. I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. I don't know if I should even be writing this.
Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. She is pregnant. And the history you're a part of. Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. And when you look at the house, that history of imagination and stubbornness and madness, any of it seems possible. I think we've been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but... The pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Three Let's of the see. gerbils are mine, and... Too had been my fault. Lucy, Daisy, Charlie, Coco, Zoe, Zerpy, Lurpy, Furpy, Chirpy, Burpy, Derpy, Derpy Jr. What the hell? Christopher, Bob, Shadow, Oliver, Shotzi. Bunny, a dog, a cat. What the hell is that? Is that a fish? Fish. Um, a dog. A cat. Oh, Tucker. I forgot Tucker. Fish, bunny. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. Molly Finch, born December 11, 1937, died December 13th, 1947. Calvin Finch, born April 25th, 1950, died September 23rd, 1961. He was only 11, and she was only 10. Damn. Sven Finch, born June 17th, 1915, died August 26th, 1964. Eddie Finch, Edie, Edie Finch, born April 8th, 1917, died December 5th, 2010. Walter Finch, born August 26, 1952, died 2005. Barbara Finch, born October 31st, 1944, died October 31st, 1960. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. Oh, it's how the house of it. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. 
Gregory Finch, 1976. He was dead one year old, damn. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. Sam Finch, April 25th to 1950, 33. Gus Finch, 1969 to 1982, 13. Wait, no, no, that's not right, it's not 13. I can't read that. Hold on. Okay. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. Sanjay Kumar, born September 6, 1966. Died September, February 23. Second, Louis Finch, born December 27, 1988, died in 2010. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. Okay, you just got really quiet, so what's gonna happen? Looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Oh, there's water right there. Oh, I'm stupid. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm. Perfect. It's going to rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. You're right, Dad. It's starting Aww. to clear up. Still freezing, though. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Hmm. Hold still while I take a picture of you. I definitely won't be moving. Are you done yet? Hey! 
<laughs> That's a keeper. Nothing quite like being outside. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. Dad! Good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Dad, I, I... Just breathe. Turn off your imagination. Focus on your target. Let me get the idea. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. If you want to survive, you'll need to be strong. Great shot, Don! <laughs> I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Don, just gotta reset the timer. <laughs> Hang on, kiddo, just trying to get a shot of the two of us together. Oh, wait, no. Wait, no. Crap. Crap. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Do I just come taking pictures? Or something? I'm just gonna wait and see if he walks over there to her. I do. <laughs> do 
I like focus the camera or something? <laughs> Bro, we're crying is so annoying. <laughs> So, I'm supposed to just like... Uh, push just let him just wait. And he eventually just walks over. <laughs> Bear back. Just, just gonna wait.
Ha <laughs> ha